Welcome everybody to another episode of Lazio Lounge, I'm Vittorio Campanile, Lazio played yesterday against Lupa Roma, so we are going to talk about this and much more with me tonight, Rami Gendi. Hello Rami, how are you? Hi Vittorio, thanks for having me back. And unfortunately, Alistair McKenzie. How are you, Alistair? Yeah, good to have the usual welcome. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, when you started saying Lazio had played a game, I was thinking, oh god, have I gone into a coma for the last few days? But uh, yeah, a, a very important game against Lupa Roma. How could I forget? Very important test. Very important test. They're talking about already a lot of a website. I don't know if you know this. They're talking about Zaghi testing Correa and Luis Alberto together, forgetting that. Correa, uh, Luis Alberto pretty much played instead of Miniko Istavic, so nothing changed on that side and I, w- I wouldn't give too much credit to that match, but I think, and I don't know if both of you guys agree with me, that it's not bad to, to have all the starting defense with you uh, this week without the national team. Because Radu is not playing anymore. Wallace hasn't been called as usual. And Acerbi as well hasn't been called by Mancini. So they played together yesterday. So I know the opponent is not, uh, you know, one that can give you a real test, especially for the defense. But it's always good to play together so you can get more confidence, learn more how the other player uh, plays on the, fi- on the p- field, try to do things, etc. Get too used to play uh, one another together. Well, the Lazio defense is Rami's favorite subject, so I'll let him answer this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, to be honest, I, I watched the highlights of the game. First of all, we won the game 13-1, I think, or something. Uh, which the first thing that I noticed was we conceded a goal from a team I don't know who, who they are. So that was some, why did we concede a goal against them? I watched the highlights, and unfortunately, it's the same problem from the left. Hand side from Luric, he conceded a penalty, so that's expected. So, other than that, um, the, I think Correa looked very well. He, he, he had some some good uh, dribbling and passing. I think I liked his, play, his highlights of the game. Uh, Basta scored two goals. Patrick scored a hat-trick, which is strange. Caicedo, of course, scored just two goals. So... I think Patrick should uh, should be our uh, immobile substitution, not Caicedo. So uh, <laughs> and Rossi scored the goal too, which is, is good. He, he, he it was a good finish. So I think he should play sometime in Syria or uh, the cup. It was a good test, I think. Patrick has an amazing record in these friendly matches. He he always seems to be scoring in in these games where we play against really lower league teams. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you're right. I don't think you can read too much into it, given what it is. They're a Serie D team, and they've, they've not even started their season. But I think it's still a good thing to have. Like you're saying, Vittorio, the fact that we can still actually have a, a, a team that's not too far off a first-choice team to play together in a friendly match during the international break Although it doesn't reflect too well on the squad, I suppose it's it's a useful thing for Inzaghi to be able to do. Um, I mean, there are a lot of players away in international duty who we'll get around to talking about. But I think, on the whole, yeah, you can't read too much into it. But it's good to have a weekend where there's still a game, they're still kind of being tested. And he's, like you mentioned, Luis Alberto had a chance to tinker with a few things as well. Yep, uh, and you were right. I wanted to to bring that up as well. Patrick in the friendly. He never scored in an official match, but in the friendly match, I think this is the third hat trick he does. So <laughs> next time, next time he plays, we sh- Inzaghi should tell me, "Hey, it's a friendly match, okay?" <laughs> and see what happens. Um, the other thing that you brought with uh, with Patrick, and I think we're gonna t- talk a little bit deeper uh, in this podcast, is the Europe League. Uh, Lazio had to announce the squad uh, two weeks ago. And 
I don't know if I can say the biggest surprise, but obviously it's a surprise that Patrick is not in the squad. Now, a little bit of background. Uh, he just renewed his contract, so we cannot say that uh, he's not in Lazio project, let's call it like that, but he's out of the Europe League team. It not it a little bit a surprise? Yeah, I think uh, it was a huge surprise for me. Especially that we, we only have uh, Marusic who's playing right now in the league. But Pasta hasn't even played a minute this season, I think. So, if, if Patrick is not in the squad in the Europa League, does that mean that he's going to play more in the league? And if he's going to play in the league, is, is Marusic going to play? Or is Pasta going to play in the league? Such a strange situation for me. Yeah, <clears throat> particularly given his versatility as well, because... In the European competitions, it's going to be quite useful given that Inzaghi's likely, not a sh- not guaranteed, but likely to play, um, you know, a second string team for some of these games. So it's, it would be useful to have someone like Patrick available who's capable of playing on the right or the left or in the back three as he has done before as well. So it is a bit mystifying, and it's, especially on the back of, like you said, Vittorio, that he was given a new contract. And on top of that, all the newspapers over here um, have been saying that he's essentially the number two now to Marisic, and he's he's gone up the pecking order to to be ahead of Basta now. So that does kind of go against that suggestion as well, and particularly at the time when Marisic is struggling a bit and coming in for a bit of criticism, it would be nice to see Patrick get an opportunity in these games if he's not going to in the league. The, the only explanation for me is that Inzaghi has Caceres in his mind as that as the Pacic situation. He he can play in the left wing, he can play in the right wing. That's the only explanation, especially that Lukaku also is not in the squad because he's injured. So we we only have Durmizi, who is still uh, hasn't impressed, and Lulic on the left side. I, I guess uh, Caceres will be the substitution if something happens to, to these players. And, and one thing we don't have to forget is that we saw it already last season. Patrick playing even in the three-man def- defense, uh, often on the right side. So I, I thought he was a sort of a, a jolly who can play in different positions. That's why uh, Lazio uh, renew his contract. And then in Europe League, he's out. Uh, as Alasdor was saying, probably he's going to play much more in the, in the Serie A. Well, I believe... Basta is going to be used more uh, in the in the Europe League, and we already heard it from from Inzaghi after Lazio Frosinone that he said that with the Europe League coming on uh, in the next week, he's going to rotate much more the players. So I believe this is going to mean that the starters are going to start in Serie A, and the other players who haven't played that much uh, are going to play in Europe League. So. Uh, this means that Bassa is going to be the starting player in the Europe League, I believe. Which, you know, with all the rumors we heard this summer that he wasn't in the project, etc., it's a little bit surprising. I, I can understand that we, we can play, Inzaghi can rest the, the important players who play in the Serie A for the Europa League. But let's not forget that this season's Europa League, we have a very tough draw. It's not going to be easy. So if we, we if we play the players uh, while resting from Serie A, we're going to get hammered every match because it's not. We're playing Marseille and Frankfurt and even Apoel. They are not easy at all. Yeah, and it's uh, it's it's the ideal start to the group. You're right. It's a very difficult group. It's a much harder one than we had last year as well. And last year, Inzaghi really did have, I suppose. From his perspective, it was the ideal draw because it did give him an opportunity to play a B team and still comfortably get through that group. He's not going to be able to do that this time round. I mean, Marseille obviously were runners up in this competition last year. Frankfurt won the German Cup and have a pretty strong looking team. And yeah, like you said, Rami, Apple and Lumisol, they, they knocked out Basel to get here, who are a team with great European pedigree. So they're not going to be easy either. And I think a lot's going to ride on that first first uh, game at home to Apollon because that's the one game when you look at those those fixtures that Lazio really really need to win. 
So it will be interesting in that match to see how experimental Inzaghi is, because on the one hand, he has the opportunity to rest players from the league and the build-up to the derby when we've got all these fixtures coming thick and fast. But on the other hand, he can't he can't afford to get that wrong. If he changes the entire starting eleven and we end up getting one point or even a defeat in that match, then immediately the chances of getting through that group become so slim. Uh, before we forget, even last year, people were saying that the Lazio group was really tough. And then as Lazio proceed and start winning, everybody said, yeah, but it's not that difficult. Let's not forget the team of last year Lazio played against in the Europe League. It was tough, but uh, Lazio was able to go through very, very smoothly. So this one is harder, probably, but not much harder than than the one of last year. And, and still, and I want to hear your opinion because this is mine, I still believe you have to rotate players uh, in the Europe League to to be able to compete in both of them, Serie A and, and Europe League. Because if you play the same players Thursday and Sunday, then you won't go far uh, to any of those competitions because uh, they need to rest. And I believe, especially in midfield, lots you have valid option. Let's not forget that Berisha didn't play a second because he was injured. Uh, you have Badel that hopefully is going to be more fit now after the rest. Uh, Durmisi maybe is going to be more used to Inzaghi uh, tactics, so he 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 could be uh, a new signing finally playing. So I think there are options there. Uh, as we said on this podcast all over again, the biggest issue is uh, the replacement of Chiro Mobile because even Immobile need to rest, and I believe that. Uh, Caicedo could be a problem in Europe League. I don't know if he's going to be able to to score like he did last year in the first round of the Europe in the group of the Europe League. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Strootman versus Cataldi. To be honest, that is going to be that is going to be a good one. So I guess Inzaghi will rotate. He has to rotate, or else uh, the the team will get tired uh, in Serie A and in the Europa League. Don't forget that we have the cup too. So. He has to rotate also in that. As for Immobile, I think Kaiseri will play. He has to play. There is there is no other option, unfortunately. I don't think he's going to start with Rossi unless he does something uh, extraordinary in the first game and scores a goal or something like that. Kaiseri will start. Uh, I don't know. I think I think we have to take the Europa League seriously because if we didn't... I, I, I'm really scared of Marsella especially because they have a really tough... Tough. Uh, they have a very strong um, squad. Uh, I think we can beat Frankfurt, uh, but it's not going to be easy, like you said. Yeah, and Rudy Garcia's got a very good record against Lazio, unfortunately, as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. The um, I, I would agree with you. I would also expect that Caicedo will be starting these games. The one thing I've, I do really hope for, though, is that Rossi does get an, a chance because. Like you mentioned there, Rami, I think he does need to do something like that, you know, have a standout performance and score a goal to get everyone's attention and, and propel him into, into the reckoning for a starting place. But, he, you know, he needs to get minutes to be able to get those chances. And he's already done pretty well, I would say, over the summer to actually end up as a third-choice striker for this squad this, uh, this season. So if that's what he's going to be, I do hope that, in games, Inzaghi's going to be willing to give him a shot. And I don't see why he wouldn't be, because he's got a track record as a coach of being willing to try out youngsters in, in, um, in matches and in big opportunities. So I just want to see Rossi come on. And I said before our preview of the, the Napoli game, first game of the season, that I'd like to see Rossi in that game and put him straight into it and see where he's at. But we still, three matches later, haven't had any sight of him. So... Yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's we all know Caicedo's not good enough by now. We may as well find out where Rossi is because I don't think they'll really know until until he's in that context. Um it's even true that this year Caicedo didn't come in in all matches Lazio played, while last year we were used to see 
Immobile coming out and Inzaghi replacing him with another striker. Uh, it didn't happen against Napoli. Uh, it didn't happen against Juventus. He only played in the in the last match. So I don't know if this is a sign that he's not convinced of of Casado or just he saw other players tired. Let's not forget that Serie A started a little bit earlier. There were players coming back from the. World Cup who wasn't fit Mial- Miliko Isavic and Badel had to play even if they were far away from the top condition but, but Vittorio yes. I think Inzaghi came out and said that he that he's happy with Caicedo did he do that? Yes that so if he's not happy with him and he's not playing him then why come out and say I'm, uh, he's good for me well, the I don't que- understand the question is did he say it because he believes it or did he say it because the, the, the club said You, we're sticking with Casado because we weren't able to sell to sell him. So you know, uh, if you want to say I'm not happy, then he's going to create problems. And of course, Casado is not going to play at his maximum because he knows his manager doesn't trust him. So I, I don't know. I don't know which of the two is the, is the truth. But yeah, consider him the second option. Can we uh, can we talk about his wages for a second? <laughs> I mean, uh, for um, I expect that most people have already seen this, but Gazeta did their usual rundown of the wage bills of various teams in, in Italy. And I don't know if this was already common knowledge or not, but it took me aback massively that Caicedo's the fourth highest earner in the club and only Immobile, Lucas and Milinkovic are earning more than him. Um, and and not, not, close... not much more too. It's it's very small. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, not not an awful lot. More. I mean, Milinkovic is on 1.8 million, and Caicedo's on 1.7. That's until Milinkovic gets his renewal, obviously. Yeah. But uh, uh, I mean, if that yeah. makes it seem even more unforgivable. I mean, I said I was pretty critical at the end when we were rounding up the transfer market, saying that I thought that the the failure to get rid of players made it a. a pretty average transfer market despite the fact that the guys we got in were pretty good but that makes it 10 times worse now that you consider the last year aren't a club with a huge budget to to spend as you can tell when you when you look at these figures and in comparison to other teams in the league so for him to be earning that much you're it's you know as a business decision it's just not getting value for money He's, he's earning more than Luis Alberto as well, who had a fantastic season last season. So that's that's and, not logical at all. And, and that's probably time. he's he's found he's found you can understand why he's not wanting to leave anyway. He doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> he's exactly. earning... Well, that's one other problem probably, but why Lazio wasn't able to sell him because he has that contract. He's not going away for less, right? So he he probably wants more, and that's why. Probably Lazio is not able to sell him. But how did Lazio ever agree to giving him that salary in the first place? This is the thing that mystifies me about Caicedo is that when we signed him, nobody really expected him to come to Serie A and score 20 goals a season. Because if you look at his track record throughout his career, he's never been a goal scorer. And he's played at some big clubs and good leagues and has great experience and, and international experience. But he's never been someone who provides you with a lot of goals. So... It just mystifies me that well, that let, let, last last summer. Yeah, sorry. Uh, don't forget that he came on a free transfer, and usually when players come from a free transfer, they get a higher salary because the club doesn't have to pay the the fee. So did Milan Badel though, and he's a you know he's a Fiorentina captain. He's the he's a Croatia international and a player who's clearly of a higher quality, and yet he's he's earning less. So, I but not. Know. It confuses me. Yeah, I, I thought. I mean, I'm really surprised as you are, but I believe that's the only reason. I don't know. I think uh, when they bought him, Terry thought that he's gonna explode in the league, and uh, like like the likes of Luis Alberto and Candreva when he came. But it didn't work out. That's the only explanation. Uh, I don't know. Uh, obviously, uh, Tare was convinced of Caicedo. And, you know, the funny thing is, can you really 
say that last year was a bad season for him. He scored enough goals. I thought the last match was terrible, and that cost Lazio uh, the Champions League. But if you Vittorio, don't, if, yep. If you think he scored enough goals, he he missed like twice the, the, what he scored. I think, and it cost us. Well, even the, the even the, the the goal he scored against Sampdoria, he was gonna miss it. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You know, he's been lucky because I think he scored a couple of goals that he didn't know even how, how he was able to do it. Uh, so you know, the the important thing is score at that point for, for, for strikers. Uh, I'm still convinced that with a with a better striker, Lazio this year could have not qualified directly for the Champions League, but be one of the favorite team. Well, now I think. Lazio is behind Inter, Roma, Napoli, and so on. So it's going to be harder for Lazio to qualify for the fourth place in the Serie A. Even Milan, Milan are looking, are looking very good. I'm, I'm not. Forget. I'm not convinced by Milan. I'm not convinced, but uh, you know, it's not going to be beat, easy. They beat Napoli, so no, they lost. Uh, they, beat, they beat Roma, yeah, but. That's good. That's always good, yeah. but that doesn't mean that. <laughs> no, I think I think Milan is going to be a little bit like 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 last year. You know, you, you see those problems, and uh, they sign Iguain for a big fee, and uh, he's not getting any younger. We said this of Parolo a lot of time last year, but I don't know. I don't know if you saw the Milan this season. I see Iguain uh, getting worse. And, uh, you know, he's the typical striker that if he doesn't score, he's pretty much useless. So, don't know. But it, I'm not saying that Lazio is going to win easily against Milan. It never happens, you know. Last time Lazio won at San Siro against Milan, uh, it was like 20 years ago. Uh, and Maldini had to score an old goal to allow Lazio to win. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with the Higuain thing. I think he's... You know, it was him who provided the assist for that goal, the last-minute goal against Romans. He was coming deep and dictating and being a bit more, you know, he's more involved in the build-up rather than just being the guy who pulls the trigger at the end of the move. So I think he, I think that's what they were missing last season was a top-quality centre-forward to finish their, the, the chances that they could create. And they do have a lot of creativity in that team. Um what I said last week is still my main concern about them is just Gattuso. I just don't know how good a coach he is, how good tactically he's going to be. And I think he outsmarted Di Francesco last weekend. Um, but, yeah, that's – it's. I mean, all these – we, we, we kind of went through this last week, so we don't need to do it again. But I think all the teams below Juventus and, you know, above kind of eighth place will have similar problems. Everyone's got – their strengths and their weaknesses. So it's just about making sure that Lazio's strengths, I suppose, are um, I suppose are exploited because the, the the problem with the start of this season so far has been that the guys who we rely upon when we're struggling a bit haven't really been able to to go into that extra gear in, in the opening weeks. But hopefully, with a bit more rest and time, that that will get going. Yeah, uh, as we said, there were a couple of Lazio players, a, a, a couple of key Lazio players like Luis Alberto Milinkovic Savic, not in top form. So uh, I think that's pretty much the reason why Lazio didn't shine in this in these matches. But even even Immobile, the last match. Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. Match. But I, I thought even against Napoli he struggled, but then he made that incredible goal mm, yeah. that was really astonishing. Yeah. Um, Alasdair, let's go back to Europe League draw because, as we were saying, it was really complicated. And it's funny because Lazio was in the first pot, so, you know, it should have been favourite, but, again, wasn't very lucky. Uh, what's what's your thought? H- how would Lazio be able to, to pass the group and arrive first? Because let's not forget that it's really important to arrive first to avoid the team that have, are relegated from the Champions League and uh, the first stage after the, the the group stage, which, you know, it's always complicated to find a big team coming down from Champions League. Well, first of all, I think that 
it, it, it's kind of surprising to me, and it's the same thing in the Champions League draw, where you've got the runners-up of the tournament from the year before who aren't going in as a top seed. And to have Marseille in the second pot, I know they just do it based on club coefficients, but given that they did so well in this tournament last year, you would have thought they might have deserved to be placed in the top pot. Um, anyway... I mean, the same thing happened to Napoli with Liverpool being in um, pot three, which they weren't very happy about, understandably. But I think um, that's going to be... The, the two games against Marseille are, are going to be the deciding factor in this group because if you look at uh, look at the squad they've got, it's full of quality, it's full of experience. Um, we know Rudy Garcia, you know, we, we know what he's all about. Um, obviously, they brought in Kevin Strootman and paid a lot of money for him, so they're not afraid to splash the cash. And there are a few other, um, I suppose, Rami, um, Dimitri Payet, obviously, is is there. So I think they're going to be they're going to be really the decisive games, the home and away with them. And I think it might actually work out quite well that the way the fixture list works, those two games are back to back. Um, so we'll be away to Marseille end of October and then at home against them two weeks after that. So I think those are the going to be the decisive games. I, I don't expect the Apollon and Eintracht Frankfurt games to be easy by any means, but uh, <laughs> the way I see it, Marseille are, are going to be the decisive ones. Uh, before going to Rami, let's not forget that Olympique Marseille at the moment is fifth with four matches played, two one, one drew and one loss. Uh, we are not talking about Paris Saint-Germain. Um, uh, let, let's not, I, I, I fear that we're talking about Olympique Marseille that won the Champions League. No, it's another team. And Strotman, it wasn't the Strotman of three years ago. And Garcia always struggled with the, with the Cups. It's tough, but it's not impossible. Uh, no, you don't agree with me. I think uh, we have to focus uh, first on the two, four games, the both uh, Apollon and Frankfurt. I think we have to focus on them and get the, the, the maximum amount of points. And the Marsilia match will be not an off match, but we, we have to, to secure some points from them. To go to, uh, I think Marseille will will uh, will not beat uh, both games of Apollon and Frankfurt, so I think we can edge them in that place. But but I I agree with Alice that I think Marseille have a very good squad and very good players. Don't forget Payet, uh, Luis Gustavo, uh, also some French other French players, uh, Ocampos. They have some very good players, so they can win the game on their own. We have some good players too, but. Like we said, we have to rest. Maybe they have to rest too. So, but for me, the most important uh, games are the, both the Frankfurt games and the Apollon games. Alistair, do you want to add something else? Well, I, well, I, I wanted to ask you guys a question, actually. Um, I've always felt that, you know, if you're fighting tooth and nail through the course of a domestic season to qualify for Europe. I've never understood why teams then don't take European qualification seriously and try and win the cups that they're in. I've never understood that. Um, so I would always say I want Lazio to take the Europa League very seriously and get as far as they possibly can in it, which they haven't always done, but under Inzaghi I think we have. Um, but, you know, after coming so co close to the Champions League last season and with the squad the way it is and the lack of a uh, Vichy Mobile and so on, do you guys, has, has anything changed for you guys? Do you think that if it was up to you, would you be happy to exit the Europa League at the group stage in order to have a stronger second half to the season in, in Serie A? Rami, no. you go first. No, no. I don't think so. I, I, I want to go for the Europa League. I want to win it. But unfortunately, the, the, the answer is easy. We're not good enough. We don't have a good enough squad. We have to have 25 perfect, very good players. You can't have that. We don't have that. So that's why we, we, we sacrificed the Europa League. 
But I don't think we sacrifice it. We we're gonna. I think we're gonna qualify for the second round, and then from the uh, the second uh, thirty second round, uh, I think we'll play with our our best players. Um, uh, I I think uh, Lazio. If I would be the manager, I'll try to win it uh, because let's not forget for a team like Lazio, but. And we talked about this already last year, Alistair, uh, when we talk about Napoli. Uh, Napoli is a big team who didn't win nothing in uh, in Europe in the last 15 years. Probably the last time they won, there was still Diego Maradona playing. And and again, you are in the Champions League and your manager opt to play the, the, the subs in a key match and they lose and they go out. Uh, so uh, even more for Lazio, I, I would try to win... A European competition, uh, not only for winning in Europe, uh, giving Lazio the 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 publicity they need. Even you know, sponsor wise, maybe a big sponsor will notice Lazio if they win the the Europe League and so on. So that would be that would be important. But I think that in the modern football, you are not allowed. You're not able to play the same players Thursday and Sunday. Inzaghi did something like that two years ago. Uh, and it was working, but then uh, we remember in in, uh, in May the team was knackered, and that's why Lazio finished poorly the first year with Inzaghi, far away from the Champions League spot. So I think it's it's correct to to try uh, and play the subs, the, the the other team. I think what what's the biggest difference is the the message you send to the players who's playing, and that is something Inzaghi has been really good, and Sadi hasn't. They have to understand that even if they are playing, this is a key match for the club. And Inzaghi is expecting the maximum from them. Even though they didn't play that much in, in Serie A, still uh, Inzaghi trusts them that they are able to, to do the best in a in an important match like Europe League. So, uh, I, I, I'm not totally... I don't agree totally with Ramiel Gendi. I think, especially this season, in midfield, Lazio has a, a very strong... Uh, midfield with plenty of option and uh, I believe that the, pretty much all the started rest and try other other midfielder in Europe League and still the quality will be high uh, and I think this is the only only solution last you have to go through uh, in both competition and let's not forget that Juventus and the other big clubs do pretty much the same only Paris Saint-Germain is allowed to start the starters whenever they want because Ligue 1 is you know for them it's, it's a joke So, yeah, I think um, as well. The other thing is that Inzaghi's going to be better this season, or you would assume at least that Inzaghi's going to be better this season at managing um, that task because, you know, we, we've got used to Inzaghi being coach, and Inzaghi's been around the club for so long that it, it feels natural. But you have to remember. That you know, he's he's. This is his first job. This is his first experience of managing a senior team, and he's he's come in and everything effectively is new to him, and he, each challenge is new, and that included last season getting into the Europa League group stage, taking this team as far as the quarterfinals in his first attempt at juggling Europe and and Serie A. I thought he did a, a really good job last season and it was only that blackout against Salzburg really that stopped us going further, obviously. So second time around, he's got that experience under his belt and I think he's got a stronger squad now than he did last season as well in terms of depth, like you were saying. So if anything, it is a tougher group. It's going to be harder to get out of the group this time around, but I think we're probably better equipped to... to, to to do it this season than we were last year. And I know what what you mean, Rami, by saying you don't think there's enough quality in the squad to to go and win it. And I can see why, because, you know, the quality of this competition has risen in recent years since, you know, with Champions League clubs who drop into it and so on. It's, it's become a lot tougher competition to win. But I don't see why we can't have similar success to last year and get into the knockout rounds and, you know, really make an impact. Um, 
I, I wanted to point it out something that we didn't say that for me is going to be very important for the Europe League. All matches Lazio's playing at home will be at six, six o'clock. I think this is a huge disadvantage for Lazio because, as we can imagine, it's going to be really tough to have the Stadio Olimpico packed because a lot of people will still be at work and won't be able to, to reach the stadium in time. Now, I think this is an incredible mistake from the UEFA. I know that there have to be matches at 9 o'clock and matches at 8 o'clock, but it's not possible that all home matches of Lazio are at 6 o'clock. That is going to be a big, big problem. 6 o'clock UK time, obviously. 7 o'clock Italian time. It's going to be really complicated for a lot of people to get to the stadium. I think this is a terrible mistake for from UEFA. They should have been careful and and put you know two at home, one away, so that Lazio can have the support of the fans. I'm um, too critical, or it's a valid point. Yeah, it's, I think it's strange to not have a combination of kickoff times. You know, that seems to be what what always happens, and as far as I can remember, that seems to be uh, the the norm. Is you know from week to week trying to work out what ridiculously complicated kickoff time we've got this week because they always seem to be at five past something or five to something instead of just doing simple. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, the other thing as well, while we're on scheduling, is, is the rugby, which has been a bit of a talking point this week where um, the, the Italy rugby team used the Stadio Olimpico for their games and... Lazio found out that they're going to be playing after the rugby team the day after them for all four games that they're using it for this year. Um, and Roma aren't playing any games after the rugby. And then I saw an article going a bit further into this, which said that in, in the last uh, 10 matches, Lazio have played eight and Roma have played two after the rugby now, I'm not sure how much of a difference that really makes. All I can say is that I came to Rome back in March to watch the rugby because Scotland were playing Italy on the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, I went to Lazio Bologna and it was a terrible game of football and Lazio uh, could only get a draw. So I, I, I don't know how much impact it makes on the pitch really, but it is a big talking point here. So it'd be interesting to hear what you guys have to say about that. Well, for me, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, the... it doesn't it doesn't make a difference. I don't think it doesn't make a difference for us. Maybe the pitch will be. Yeah, that's the problem. Good, yeah, that's the only problem, I guess. Well, but... yeah, this is it. But I mean, obviously, rugby is an incredibly physical sport, so the pitches do take an absolute battering during games. So, yeah. if a team, for example, that likes to play a passing passing game, which Lazio do your passes are less likely to go where you intend them to go if there's various divots and so on on the surface. Mm -hmm. And it's asking a lot to change the entire surface of the Stadio Olimpico pitch from the All Blacks playing Italy overnight, turning that into a Serie A quality lawn pitch. Yeah, that, that that's a problem because as Alistair, who is our expert of rugby, yeah. I, I, I I was. I wanted to ask you. Did you feel a little bit at home that finally there's a little bit of rugby discussion in Rome? <laughs> well, every time I've I've had a rugby experience in Rome, it's been fantastic. But it does tend to be for about three weeks maximum of a year, <laughs> and then everybody else forgets about it for the rest of the day. Yeah. Well, the the biggest problem is that is that the Stadio Olimpico already is not in great condition, in great shape. After the rugby. It's getting worse, and it's true that Lazio should be playing on Monday, so uh, the pitch will have two days of rest, nearly two days of rest. But is it enough? I don't think so. And uh, even though I believe Lazio didn't play well against Bologna because you were at the stadium, I still believe that a little bit of that was due to the pitch condition. So, yeah, Lazio is a team who likes to play the ball fast and uh, with a lot of passes, so... This will condition uh, the 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 match of Lazio, and again, as you were saying, it, it's it's silly. It's like the UEFA allowing Lazio to play all the matches at home at seven o'clock instead of uh, mixing them. Still, again, 
I absolutely don't believe that Serie A and didn't... For me, that, that, that timing is strange for me, for the Europa League games. Yeah, I, I don't believe Serie A did it on purpose, you know, I don't think, ah, remember at the 10th of October there is a rugby so we have to have Lazio playing at home, but they didn't think at all completely and uh, this is what happened. So guys, I want to talk about something, as we're talking about fixtures, the the, the fixtures of uh, until the 16th match, I think, were, were announced also, the timing of it. And uh, is the f- this is this season, Serie A, it's going to be the first time ever that we're going to have a Boxing Day, like the English Premier League, right? So uh, our uh, three games are going to be, uh, we'll have three games in eight days. They're going to be Cagliari in December, of course. They're going to be Cagliari at home, Bologna away, and Torino at home. And I think that is excellent uh, fixtures for us. Um, yeah, they, they have been already last year, the Boxing Day. I went to, to the match. It was uh, Lazio Crotone for nil, and uh, and uh, before there was uh, the the Coppa Italia against no afterwards there was the Coppa Italia against Fiorentina, but I think it's really important. I think uh, you know it's it's a nice uh, thing for the fans to finally have a match in during Boxing Day and those Christmas holiday, so they can go and watch Lazio, and as you were saying, it, it's it's good matches for Lazio. We we hope that Lazio win all of them because they are quite uh, easy matches, but you'll never know, <laughs> unfortunately, with Lazio. Let's not forget that in the past, last year, Lazio struggled a lot with the with the so-called easy team. When a team comes to Rome to defend, Lazio often struggle. Uh, so, I don't know. I hope this year it's different. Maybe Casado was going to be the answer, but yeah, Lazio have to improve a lot against the... Uh, Easy teams. Well, yeah, I mean, with with the winter break as well, this is a thing. It's something that, like Rami alluded to, um, British football fans are have been very used to for quite a long time. But it does take a bit of adjusting to because the fixtures do pile up so much in the vet in, in December. So, yeah, I mean, with between Europe and. Uh, and Serie A, I think Lazio have seven seven games, I think, before in in the one month. So when we're talking about rotation and fitness and everything, I think that's the period that it, it can really define your season, you know, in, in both competitions, how far you're actually going to get. So uh, I think it's, it's encouraging uh, to, to answer your question that the fixtures have been kind to us there because... Clearly, the fixtures haven't been kind to us in other parts of the season, and I suppose that you know we've we've tried to remain pretty upbeat after the Napoli and Juve games at the start of the season, and I suppose this is where you kind of reap the benefits from having that tough start. Is that there will now you know the toughest challenges are are, are already out of the way, and every game until we meet them next time, we'll we'll go into with every confidence of winning. Not that we shouldn't go into Napoli and Juve games thinking we can't win, but you know it's. Uh, it's it's realistic now, I'd say. Yeah, and and the other positive thing is that in January, where well, there is not going to be Europe League, Lazio is going to play only those two matches, Napoli and Juventus. So uh, has time to rest the starters and focus only on those two very difficult, but only two matches. And the Coppa Italia as well. Yeah, we have to see if they're still there in Coppa Italia. <laughs> Right? Because I think we are playing the first one in December. Uh, no. Uh, oh, is that right? I thought the Coppa Italia was the first game back after the international break. Ah, uh, maybe you're right. Um, I think that was the case last year when we played Cittadella. But perhaps I'm wrong. I better check. <laughs> no, because we played the Fiorentina uh, and it was December. So... I was just I was, going to the fixtures and it's yeah, thirteenth of January, Pisa or Novara in the Cup Italian. Ah, okay. So um perhaps it's changed this season for some reason. Yeah, it could be. Alistair, I wanna ask you something. Uh sure. did NATO sign a new contract until twenty twenty two? 
Uh, well, Neto's contract is until then, yeah. I mean, I think um, the deal with Neto was, as far as I understand it, a, a loan with obligation to buy. So I don't think la when he arrived last summer that he was permanent, but then he was always going to become a permanent signing. That's my understanding of it. Um, what about what about Jordao? Because he, he, he hasn't signed anything. No, he has the contract expiring in 2019. Jordan. Yeah. Well, maybe they, they trust more Neto than Jordao, but I'm a little bit disappointed they still didn't play one second. Well, I, I don't see wh where they would have, you know, this season, if that's what you mean. I mean, there's there's so many players left in the squad who haven't played played yet this season, and the Frosinone game, I think, could have been an opportunity to bring on some guys and give them an opportunity if we'd actually scored the kind of four or five goals that we should have scored in the first half it would have turned into a game where you have the opportunity to give people a chance but the way that game went it, there was too much at stake so Inzaghi's substitutions eventually were actually very um you know they were not negative but he was quite cautious in his changes so I think if they are going to play any football it's more likely to be you know, that Coppa Italia game, for example, because even we've just talked about the Europa League and the challenges that's going to face. So, I, to be honest, I, I find it hard to see them even getting games in the Europa League very easily this year. Yes, but my point is a little bit different. If Lazio invested all that money in those two players, then I hope th the second year they would be more than you know, give, let's give a kid a go five minutes of play. No, they should be so good that Inzaghi said, you know what, Parola's coming out, I'm putting Neto in because he's so good, he's a good player and uh, he, he can prove it at this level. Instead, we're still in the, in the mood that, okay, the match is over, we are 5-0 in, we're, we're winning 5-0, okay, let's the kid come in. And, and this scares me, if you understand what I mean, because... It tells me, well, maybe they're not so good as people was thinking. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't agree with you on that because I think that you have to forget about the money. I know it's not easy to because Lazio don't pay much for players on the whole. So to do it for such young guys, you want to see a return on it. But I think you have to trust in Zaghi's gut instinct with them because he's the one who's who's seeing the way they train and how ready they are or not for first-team football. Clearly, last season, he made a decision that these guys weren't ready to play senior football yet. I I am surprised to have not seen a single minute of either of them, but I, I think that if he's wanting to be cautious with their development, that's not the worst thing to do because the last thing you want to do is uh, throw them in before they're ready and they have you know, a terrible match and the fans turn against them or people write them off and they get negative reviews in the press. These guys are young, you know, they're teenagers and they, they, they might be a bit more susceptible to, uh, to folding under pressure. I don't know what their personalities are like, but if, they, if it didn't go well for them on a, on a debut and their confidence was, was smashed, then that, that could have worse long-term consequences than being a bit more cautious with their development and waiting for the right moment to bring them in. Rami, what's your idea? I don't, I don't understand the situation. Uh, I think last season, when, especially when Nani came, they were supposed to grow and uh, play football and uh, improve with the team and, get, and, and life in Italy. And then the second season, they were supposed to be in the, in the squad, important players in the squad. But I, I don't think I even saw, saw Jordao before. I think Neto, Neto played some games. He played in the friendly games this season. I saw him. But I, I don't know. I guess they, they, they didn't impress anyone, so they're just forgotten or something. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I hope they're not forgotten, because otherwise <laughs> we last year thrown away money. But I totally understand what you're saying. And, you know, this is my point. Uh, we saw um, in friendly match last year that they had talent. And as well, this summer, uh, Jordao and, uh, and, and, and Neto doing really interesting things. 
But then it reminds me a little bit. It's different, eh? But it reminds me a little bit of Morrison. The first year of Morrison with uh, with Pioli, I think, in the friendly match, he really impressed me. I really thought, wow, this guy is it's really talented, etc. And then I was hoping, you know, to translate this thing to Serie A. He said, no, he didn't play in Serie A. And I was, well, what's going on? You know, we saw the talent. Of course, with with the uh, with the uh, Morrison is different because there is all the background, you know, his behavior, etc. Exactly. I, I don't believe with Neto and, and uh, Jordao there is this problem, but I still didn't see them, you know, and they didn't play uh, in the friendly match against Lupa Roma, I think because they were calling the national team, but that so, would have been, that was, that would have been a great chance for them to play. That, that's another strange situation. How are they getting called to the national team and they're not even playing one minute for Lazio? I don't understand that. Well, because they're considered well, they're, so... They're, they're, yeah. Go, Alistair. They're, they're, playing for the, they're playing for the youth team, so I think you'll find that at youth level there's a, a lot of players who aren't necessarily involved in the first team setup, but are still at age grade level a cut above the rest. I mean, there, there are quite a lot of examples you'll find of that. I, I think that there's an expectation because we we know so little about them and because of the kind of almost mythical status about their arrival here, which has <laughs> been such a big talking point considering we've not seen them play at all. I think expectations are almost unnecessarily high now. I, I don't, I doubt that these guys are superstars because they probably would have made an impact by now if they were. That's not to say they won't be useful players and first team players at some point, but I think we do need to manage our expectations with them a bit. Um, I hope it's not another Ravel Morrison situation like you're saying, Vittorio, but I don't think with Morrison that there was ever really a question about his ability. I think anyone who'd seen him play before he arrived at Lazio knew that he was a naturally very gifted footballer. The question was always about everything else, about his personality, his character, his work rate. And he's shown while he's been here that that's still a problem and he's not been able to adapt. So, yeah. Morrison, the- Morrison is a completely different story. I mean, the, the, the best manager in the world, like, Sir Alex Ferguson, couldn't control him. So I don't think anyone else will, can. <laughs> yeah, well, yep. exactly. That almost says it all pretty much. Yeah, that's a valid point. Still, I hope they're going to show because... It's really rare to see Iglitare spending all that money on a player. So, you know, if he goes he goes all in, I believe he saw something special. And he usually Yeah, we can talk about Casado, but he usually good. He usually uh get it right. So, you know. So, guys, I want to ask you something. Uh what what do you think what happened with Immobile with Italy? With the Poland match, Balotelli started and then Italy were losing and they needed to score. And then Bilotti came on for Balotelli and Immobile didn't play. So is there a problem there or something? Alessio, you go first. I was going to say, let the Italians speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was baffled by that, honestly. I, I, I know Mancini and Balotelli have this... Yeah, you know, very long-running relationship, and Mancini believes he's the man who who can bring the best out of Balotelli. He always has. But come on, I mean, you're talking about a guy whose best ever season, never mind what he's done recently, but his best ever season in Serie A was 14 goals at Milan, and he's getting in the team ahead of a guy who's Capo Canonieri last season with 29 and scoring a similar amount the season before that. And, you know, you've mentioned, Vittorio, before that Immobile, it's crazy the criticism that some Italy fans direct at him when he plays in the national team. But he's still your best option. I mean, with the national team, you you have to pick on form, really. And if you're playing a, a system with a single striker, then how Balotelli's getting that team ahead of Immobile and how uh, Bellotti's the first option off the bench. I mean, Bellotti's a good player, but he still, in my mind, has to be behind Immobile. 
I mean, to be fair, the one thing I would say is uh, reading the paper today and, and what's been on the news, it does look like Mancini's going to start Immobile on Monday against Portugal. So hopefully that those reports are true and that does actually happen. But at least if that does go ahead, he'll have you know, admitted he was at fault. Uh, I'm not sure. What I, what I read is that he's going to try Belotti uh, instead of, uh, of Immobile. Uh, what I can say is that we all know that Mancini has a special relationship with Balotelli. I, I, I think the message that he's sending is completely wrong. Starting Balotelli in front of of uh, of uh, Immobile is simply uh, inexplicable. I mean, after all Immobile did in the last two years compared to Balotelli, the, the, the two players are not on the same level. We can agree that the potential of Balotelli is huge. But we have to say that he's not 21 years old anymore. He's shown in the in the years that he's not able. He's not able to show his talent, and uh, and that's a fact. And uh, so I I really don't understand how is it possible that he started uh, instead of uh, Chiro Mobile. On the other side, I have to be really honest and say I'm happy because this means that Chiro Mobile would be less tired for Lazio, and if he doesn't play. I'm even happier, you know, from talking about Lazio. We will have a, a key player who comes back relaxed because he didn't play even more. Maybe he's even hungry because he's been called in the national team and he didn't play. So maybe he come back to Lazio and he's really eager to show that he's the best striker in Italy. Vito- Vittorio. Yep. I, I understand your point and I agree. But there's something also else for a striker to, to feel that these two players that are not good enough are playing ahead of him. His confidence is is hurt. He's, he would be hurt. His confidence would be not that good because he knows he's better than these guys, but he's not playing for some reason. So, yeah, I worry because of that. It's okay that he's not he's not playing, and it's good for us. But still, his confidence will be hurt. I'm not sure because we're talking about two different managers, and I mean, we know it, so everybody knows the special relationship Mancini has with uh, with Balotelli. Back from an international break, having played really well in sports and plays that someone who's not part of the team and isn't very happy about it. Exactly. I'd, I'd, I'd be much happier if Immobile starts tomorrow, scores the winning goal to beat Portugal, and that means you come back on a high. And, you know, his, his goal against Napoli, don't get me wrong, was, was an exquisite role is absolutely brilliant but he, since then he's really not been on top of his game and it's yeah it's just two games Juve and Frosinone but he's, he's looked to shadow the player we saw last season so we do we need him to be firing uh, because without him we're as we've discussed in length tonight we're in we're in a bit of trouble yep well, I don't know. We're going to see if he plays tomorrow and how he comes back from uh, from the national team. Let's not forget that last year he was coming back and the full of criticize for Italy not qualifying and a lot of people was blaming Ciro Mobile that was the top striker that didn't score for Italy or didn't allow Italy to qualify for for the World Cup. So, I don't think that there's so much difference between this year and, and last year. So, that was not his problem at all, what happened with Italy. Well, you, you weren't in Italy. A lot of people were complaining. I know, I understand. Blaming he, he him. Was the, he was the scapegoat because they, yeah. they expected from him a lot. and he, But it's not. it wasn't his problem. Belotti was having a great season as well and he did nothing. Ah, Belotti was, was useless, I thought. Yeah. Um, talking about matches, before we wrap up, wrap up the, the show, there's Empoli Lazio next Sunday. Six o'clock. Uh, you know, Empoli is at four points. It's above Lazio. It's going to be a complicated match. What's your thought? Um, I think so. Yeah, I mean, they're they're a team that uh, they've got some really good players in there. They're not they're not like the um, you know the Kievos and Frosinones of this league who are who are just going to go and defend and hope for the best. Um, They've got a team with a lot of gifted and technical players. Um, above all, 
Mia Zayic. He looks really good. He's he's started the season so promisingly. Um, he's a, a, a playmaker, like a trequartista, I suppose. And uh, yeah, they, they've got players in that team who I think can can damage us. But on the other hand, I think that you know overall the quality in this Lazio team is is better than the quality in that Empoli team, obviously. So I think that playing against a team who are going to be more willing to be expressive and not just camp in, I think that might actually benefit us better. I think Lazio, Lazio uh, thrive more in open matches than they do in closed matches. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for, at least from this game. Rami? Yeah, I agree. Uh, playing Empoli away is always tough. It's not an easy fixture. But... Uh, hopefully the players coming back from the international break, uh, they will be fit, uh, and the players that are with the, with the squad right now will be fit, and we'll, we'll have a better, uh, we'll have a good run of uh, of matches. I, I see us winning. It won't be easy. I think the, we will win one nil or two one or something, but hopefully we'll not concede. Let's hope the, the defense is better this game. But we'll see. And we find Balk, uh, we will play against Aurelio Andreazzoli. I don't know if you remember, but he's always in my heart. So, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a good memory coming back uh, and see him. Uh, hopefully this will bring a good memory even to Senat Lulic. Who knows? Maybe he's going to score again. <laughs> yeah, that's... It, it's it's impressive, you know. You're, you're managing to get these little sly digs in wherever possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a very good memory. It, it, you have to be honest. They were talking so highly about him uh, when when he started being the manager of Roma. Now we know that very often this happens when a player goes to Roma, etc. But uh, I'm pleased that. You know, he was really, unfortunately, to uh, to be there in the wrong moment uh, <laughs> of the season, etc. And uh, he 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 really managed to change Empoli last season and make them play very well. So uh, we're gonna see what happened. Maybe you know he's gonna have bad dreams the night before playing Lazio, remembering all about all what happened to him. But it's it's a key. It's a really key match, you know. As we said, Lazio Frosinone was vital to win. I think again, this is another match Lazio has to win. Definitely, there is no other result. If you want to compete for the Champions League, you have to win it. Yeah, well, I think this whole run of games. I mean, I said it last week as well, but I think this run of games now between uh, between Empoli and the Derby is essential. That, this is a great time to pick up a good run of form leading into that match. And Empoli, it won't be easy, like we're saying. Um, likewise, Genoa and Udinese, but they are all games that we should be going into as favourites. So, you know, pick up nine points from those three games and things are suddenly looking pretty rosy, I'd say, ahead of that derby and against a Roma team who are having their own problems and not impressing too much at the moment either. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big month ahead, really. And... Yeah, it starts starts next weekend. So let's hope. Rami, before we wrap it up, do you want to say something else? Uh, Alistair, are you going to have a stat today or or not? Uh, man, it's the international break. I'm having a week <laughs> off. <laughs> you well, always have, have the week off. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, I've got you covered. I've got two stats. Uh, one after the the UV game, which is. It's not going to be good. The, the Lazio have failed to win for five league games in a row for the first time under Inzaghi. That's not a good stat. And I, I, think have... a, I think that stat's unfair, though, because it's broken over two seasons. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I <don't even> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have another stat after the Ferzimoni game, which is, is a good one. Uh, Luis Alberto has been directly involved in 11 goals in his last Serie A, 10 Serie A games. Played five goals and six assists, so he's vital for us. Yep. Yeah, that's an impressive, impressive amount actually, and I think he, uh, 
Yeah, we talked about this last week after the game itself, but I think it, it was good to see him get the goal that won that game because he, he wasn't he didn't start that match particularly well, but so for him to score it and he did just immediately he looked a lot more confident and that's that's the guy we want. Um confident Alberto I think makes this entire team function a lot better. Yes, I totally agree. Alistair? I, I all- Ah, uh, sorry. I also want to mention something. I'm sorry, Vittorio. So after the 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 transfer window ended in September first, I tweeted. Uh, so I guess Mauricio, Minala, Ravel Morrison, Okomenidis, Lombardi, and Preya will get paid loads of money and doing absolutely nothing in return. Hashtag frozen out. And today, 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 Chris Okomenidis liked it. His, of, his official Twitter page. He, him, he liked it. So I guess he's going to get paid for doing nothing. Or maybe uh, he was upset. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't imagine he's very happy about the situation either, to be honest. But uh, yeah, you're you're right to flag that up because it is a ridiculous mess that there are so many players who are just not going to be used but still are at the club. Yeah. Alistair, do you have something else to I've say? I've got nothing else. You've, you've tried me. <laughs> oh, blame me as usual. Eh? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Well, um, uh, as we said this summer, I think Iglitale needs to buy, to find another another person to help him sell players. Well, he's very good in buying them. He's not that good in selling them. So maybe if, if he finds someone else to help him, all this economy, this Mauritius and so on, could have been somewhere else. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to see what happened. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say that we didn't have time to talk about was, well, the renewal of contract of uh, Miniko Isavich that's going to come, the agent said already, and uh, and um, and Chiro Mobile is the signing of a new physiotherapist and this looks to have started uh, this summer there have been some discussion with the physiotherapist that was following Lazio before and that's probably one of and one of the discussion was uh, how to how to uh, cure the the players that were injured i believe Berisha was one of them and uh, yeah the new physiotherapist come from the AS Roma he was there Uh, well, he stopped two years ago, and uh, now he's managing. He's working for Lazio, and hopefully, uh, they're gonna solve these problems with the injury they had this summer. Uh, who knows? Maybe that's one of the reasons why Luis Alberto and uh, Berisha. Can we trust him, though? Well, he said that still a lot of Roma players. He he was called the magician of the ankles. Now, by <laughs> 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 them, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I don't know him, honestly. But he was saying that a lot of Roma players, when he left the Roma, were still coming to him, avoiding the, the, the Roma physiotherapist. So maybe he's good. I don't know. But that's the news, you know. Lazio getting up someone from Roma. Well, he certainly does his PR very well. If he's going around saying he's the magician of ankles with the <laughs> Roma players coming to his home. Um But this was a, uh, yeah. I mean, this was supposedly the um, the uh, the thing that caused the conversation between Lotito and Inzaghi on the phone. The leaked video was yeah. supposed to be all about this. So at least it's been resolved and yeah, that position's been filled. It seems like quite a long gap though between. I think. That, Did he left in during Aronso, or was it in Germany? No, in Germany. In Germany, he resigned. So, I mean, it's quite a big gap between then and now to not have anybody looking after the players in that way. So, um, I mean, sure, I'm sure they've had somebody, but yeah, perhaps in that position. So, probably yeah. he wasn't in the in the team. He was uh, a freelancer or someone outside the the, the squad for the moment. Uh, I th- I think we can wrap it up here. Uh, it has been a long podcast. So many things to talk, even though Lazio didn't play an official match. Uh, thank you very much, Ramiel Gandhi. You know that you are more than welcome when you want to join us. Uh, I cannot say the same thing to Alistair McKenzie, but uh, I'll pretend to, to say it. Uh, 
to to all of you listening to us uh remember you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes you can follow us on Twitter on Facebook and if you like the podcast and want to support us you you have our patreon page patreon.com/lazio-lounge and you can support us there and we're going to talk again next Sunday thank you very much Alistair thank you very much Rami have a nice week thank you Vittorio cheers Jim.